Hi, welcome to Unit 4. And the topic for Unit 4 is matching learning outcomes with learning resources. And resources of focus here will be open educational resources. It could be any other resources, but this is where you bring in open educational resources. You see the level we have passed through from the beginning, the process, you don't just jump into picking and open educational resources. You must plan it. It must be purposeful. I am Professor Inegbedion Juliet Obajaji. Now, let's see how it goes. The one is a learning outcome for this unit. By the end of this unit, you will be able to select appropriate online learning resources. That is our focus, how you will select your learning resources. Remember, we have walked through your learning activities, selecting your learning activities, selecting the pedagogy that you need to go, and now we have to select the learning resources. Now, how do you go about it? Now, when you want to match your learning resources to learning outcome, what you need to consider is the course information, the topic, the learning outcome, the key content, the learning activities, and the pedagogy in the lesson plan. Think of all possible resources that could help achieve the learning activities in line with the learning outcome. Also consider the type of pedagogy that you're going to use that will help you achieve the, uh, what you have selected. Now, among all the possible resources, you must think of this select the one that is best match with consideration to some basic things. Now, I take it again, you have done your brainstorming, you have come up with the resources, and you have selected the best out of the resources that will help you achieve the activities and the learning outcomes. But before you settled on those resources, there are things you need to consider three basic things. One, the availability of the resources. Secondly, ability to use. And thirdly, the cost. Why are these important? You could have a resources that is very wonderful, but it is not available. And if it's not going to be available for the learners to use, therefore, it will be a waste, and it will not be able to help to achieve the intended learning outcome you have set for it to achieve. Again, ability to use. You may have a resource and it is available, but if the learners cannot use it and there is no way you can guide them, you did not integrate it into your lesson, therefore it will be useless. So when you are selecting a resource, you have to consider the ability for them to use that resource. If you discover that they need further training or they need to be guided, and you need to now provide that guidance for them to use that resource. Then lastly is the cost. You may have a resource that is so wonderful, good, and it's really nice that will help you achieve a particular learning outcome. But maybe for you to get that resource is a lot of money. And you have to look at, do you have that fund to spare? If you don't know how this fund, what do you do? You have to think around another resource that could still give you the same, uh, give you the, the same uh, answer, we still help you meet the same learning outcome, but however, it will be cost that you will be able to uh, afford and you'll be able to provide. So these are the basic things you consider when you are choosing your resource. Now let's look at this. Here was where we stopped with our learning activities. If you look at the table, you see that we have walked through this in the last video. And here we stop with our pedagogy. We have selected the learning activities, we have selected the pedagogy uh, that we're going to use. So the next thing that is left now, we have the learning resources, assessment method, estimated time of study, and person responsible. And right here, we're going to walk through these three. We're going to leave out this last column because I've explained this last column on how you can use it. If you have somebody that you know you are not taking that course alone, then you're going to indicate who is going to handle each section. 
But if you are taking it alone, then this colon will not be useful. But however, we are not going to look at the learning resources, assessment method, and estimated time of study. This is where the workload comes in to know how long it will take the learner to go through this. So in this case, we are now having on learning resources. That is where we are now. And this is where you have the open educational resources coming up. Because it is when you have done this that you start looking for where do I find this. And like I said, it is always very important for you to consider the availability even right from this stage that you want to start filling them in. Because when you have completed it totally, totally, and that is when you start searching around, you may come back redesigning again, and that will be time lost. But however, remember when you are designing your learning resources, it comes back to your learning outcome, to your key content, to the activities, to the pedagogy that will direct your learning resources. So right here, let us look at the learning resources we have for this course guide that we have set here. So here, the learning resources is introductory video. There we have instructional video on how to use the platform. So in this, I'm going to prepare two videos. Or I'm going to look for two videos that's already in existence. For example, I'm saying how to use the platform. Let me use example of what we do in my institution. In my institution, we use Moodle. And if I'm using Moodle to de deploy my content, I could easily get an OER video from the Moodle uh, partners, and I could deploy that and use it for my learning. That is OER. So in this case, I need video. Or now, I don't have the introductory video. I need to prepare one. I need to have a studio. Think of when do I have the things that I will need that will help me get it ready. If I'm going to do it with my laptop, does my laptop have a webcam? You now have to consider all those things. Now, remember the cost. What will it cost me? If I have to do it myself, I have to pick from the OER. So having done that, I now came up assessment method. Oh, we are not going to assess this particular cost guide. I put need. Then I've come to my uh, estimated time of study. I'm estimating one hour that with within one hour, you would have watched the videos, you would have, let's say, where you calculate the estimated time of study. If you go to the content I provided for you, I gave you a link of the time estimator. There are things you need to consider, and I equally referred you to one of my papers that I wrote on how to calculate uh, the hours of study for learners. So you can go there and look at it. Now, if you look at this part again, we have already completed this part. Remember, we are working on Moodle 1, basic concept in statistics for educational managers. And I'm speaking on Unit 2 of Moodle 1, types of educational data. And again, we have worked to this level of the pedagogical approach to it. So now I need learning resource that will help the learners achieve the stated learning outcome that will help them meet up with the activities. So what will I do now? Here, I think I brainstormed and I came up with the best I have brainstormed with. So it means I will need reading. So if I have reading, what will I prepare my reading on? Remember, I have my key content. I need reading to cover data required. I need reading to cover evaluation of this. Then again, I said I'm going to have 10 to 15 minutes video on types of data required in educational planning. So here, I'm going to either do uh, look for already existing video that captured these types of data required in educational planning. And in looking for that video, it's not just picking any video I see online, I now have to look for open educational resource video that has to speak to this. And if I can get that, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I may just use that and it saves my time. Because when you are going to prepare these resources all by yourself, you have to think about the timing too that you have. Remember, on the course information, you have to indicate the time that you require to complete all the things you need to do. So also, you are going to consider the time. If the time you're going to spend to prepare the video by yourself, I discover it will be easier for you to get open educational resource. You go out now and get your open educational resource. Now, how will I assess this? 
I said, I'm going to set two multiple choice questions on this particular learning outcome. So because remember too, learning outcome is the one that guides on the, the particular assessment mode. This is the area we are so much consigned with. You see it? We are consigned with the learning resources. That is what we are working on. So I want you to take note of this. The aspect we are consigned with, the learning resources. Learning resources, this is the actual part that brought us this far. This is where you can use your OERs. This is where you use your open educational resources. So until you walk through all the processes, you cannot jump into using the open educational resources. It is a wrong idea to pick the open educational resource. You just see a material, or oh, this material, oh, I have a course I'm going to work on. I just pick it and start using it without defining, without having a focus, without having a roadmap of what you need to do before picking that material. If you do that, definitely you'll run into some challenges as you walk along. In conclusion, you determine the learning resources after you have stated the learning outcome and the learning activity because they determine the type of learning resources that will be required. It is at this point of searching for the identified learning resources that open educational resources are considered either due to lack of time to produce quality content from scratch or to reduce cost of production. So think the structure first before thinking OER. With this, say thank you for listening.